I'm not sure anybody's out there yet, so I'm gonna give a little bit of time. I guess I'll talk a little bit about CVP coaching until I start to see some people out there. And um, so I started CVP coaching about uh, five years ago here in Memphis when we moved here for the second time and my business uh, immediately took off. It was wonderful. I wasn't expecting to get the response that I got. CVP coaching is contemporary voice and performance coaching and that's exactly where this focus lies. It's very specific and yet it's a huge bucket of music styles. <clears throat> I typically tell clients on their first day that uh, the classical singers, the opera trained uh, singers and performers, um, we, we have them over to the side, uh, not because they're not welcome, they're more than welcome, but because that's not the focus of CVP coaching as contemporary voice and performance coaching. Hey, Christiana, glad to see you joining me from Italy. I hope more people join uh, here locally. And um, I'm gonna wait for them a little bit and just keep talking about what we're doing uh, until more people come in who told me they were coming. I'd like to wait for them, give them a minute. So, as I said, over here we have our classical and our opera trained people, our formally trained people. And the reason, the only reason why they're over here to the side is because all the rest of us are taking up the rest of the space here in the studio. And that is our R&B singers, our jazz singers, our pop singers, our rap singers, rock, contemporary Christian, uh, gospel, Anything that I missed, anything that's not over here to the side, you're in this giant bucket because we all, believe it or not, we all approach singing the same way. Now you may say, wait a minute, these styles don't sound anything alike. Yes, that's correct. We stylize very differently, but we approach singing the same way. Typically, excuse me, <clears throat> uh, essentially, we approach singing with our speaking voice. That is how contemporary singing is approached. It is with our speaking voice. So one example that I'll give you is our classical singers and our opera singers, they are very fond and they are masters at their head voice uh, and they use it quite often in their singing. And we actually love our head voice, but we like to, avoid our head voice as long as possible and we just want to bring up our chest voice as high as it'll go before we finally surrender and go to head voice. Uh, another distinction along those lines is over here on the classical side of the house, they may spend an entire verse or an entire section of a song uh, in their head voice, but us over here, we're going to just use it as a little accent. It's just gonna be a little pop in the song. We might say a word or a phrase over here in our head voice. And so that's kind of a distinction between uh, our classically trained folks and then all the rest of us over here in this giant bucket of contemporary singers and how we sing using our speaking voice. Hey, Francesca, so Franquisha, so great to see you. I don't have my glasses on because I don't want the glare. Cindy Bowles Blake, thanks for joining me. <clears throat> yes, Franquisha, so great to, to see you online. Haven't heard from you in a while. I hope that your singing career is going well. Okay, so the very first thing that we're going to talk about is the very basic the most basic, the most basic principle of singing. It's the one thing that I really believe that singers struggle with the most. They struggle with the most and it, they do it incorrectly. They don't know they're doing it incorrectly. Uh, they may not know that it should sound, uh, be approached very differently than it is with what we do with everything else. And what am I talking about? Does anybody have any idea what I'm referring to? Hey, Lori, I'm glad you made it. Uh, I am talking about breathing, okay? Because breathing for survival is very different than breathing for singing. It's very different. Okay, so let's look at just, we're just gonna talk about breathing for a second, okay? The very first thing, if you're able, while I'm talking, uh, if you wanna participate, then I want you to clear the area around you just enough to where you can stand. Hopefully you can get your phone in a place where you can look straight on and you're not having to look down at it because that would just be bad posture for any singing. And so what we wanna do is I want you to have enough room to extend your arms out, okay? Because we're gonna take what I call a flying breath in just a minute. So again, going back to talking about 
breathing for survival being so different than breathing for singing with breathing for survival it is continuous we never stop breathing we're always breathing you can drink a whole bottle of water you could be dead asleep you ever heard someone say man I didn't even come up for air I was so hungry but they still managed to slide air in between those bites or they probably wouldn't have made it through their meal so it is continuous it is subconscious we never have to think about it and there is a proper way to breathe for singing that we want to get to that subconscious level where we don't have to think about it it just happens we want that to be but it is very different for breathing for survival okay so here's the huge distinction when you breathe for survival you do not maintain a reserve of air okay so I want everybody right where you are just go ahead and take a breath in we're gonna take a runner's breath we're gonna breathe in through our nose and out through our mouth take a breath in Ah, very nice. Okay, I hope you did that with me. We're gonna, we're starting right there, okay? That is your, that is the first step towards being a better singer. All right, now, if you notice, when I asked you to take that breath, you more than likely did not have to exhale in order to inhale. So that proves the point that we do not keep a reserve of air, all right? So again, I mentioned before, we're gonna take an, a runner's breath, an athlete's breath. This is not how we breathe for singing. Okay, it's just to demonstrate how much air we can actually take in. So let's breathe in through our nose and out through our mouth again. <sighs> Great, okay, I hope you did that because we're gonna move on. We build in here, all right? So we build in layers. So now that we know how to breathe in through our nose and out through our mouth, we're gonna add our arms and we're gonna take a flying breath. So we're just going to come up Okay, so you're only gonna go as far as your shoulders. Here's why. Because we wanna make sure that we don't pass our shoulders because now we're constricting the lungs and it defeats the point of a full breath, okay? So let's try that again. <sighs> Great, okay? Now, if you've done that with me, hopefully you have. I'm gonna add the next layer and that is gonna require sound, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to take in a breath. Watch me first. Ha! You're just releasing the sound. Just release, you take in a big breath and just release your voice, okay? Go ahead and do that. Ha! Awesome. Next, we're gonna go to hey, cause it's a little uh, warmer on the face. So I'll demonstrate. Hey! Awesome. Do it with me. Hey! Okay, great. Now, hopefully that's the deepest breath that you've taken all day and you're aware now that, wow, you really can take in a lot of air whenever you engage more than just your lungs just breathing in and out. We wanna make room for that air to come in by move, you moving our arms out uh, of the way and really focusing on that breath. Okay, so as I was saying, when we breathe for survival, it's continuous and yet we do not maintain a reserve. So I would say, it, I mean, how much air do you have in you right now? 5%, 10%, no, there's no air that's, that's stagnant that you're holding onto, it's just passing through continuously. However, whenever we breathe for singing, it is the polar opposite, okay? When you breathe for singing, you want to maintain between 80 to 100% full at all times. Okay, very, very different than what we're doing for breathing for survival. Now, uh, I'm gonna stop right here and I'm gonna talk about uh, a word. If you've ever taken voice lessons, training, been in choir, you've had a leader or a director or a coach who has talked to you about your diaphragm. Yes? Feel free to interact with me. Okay, so I'm not gonna talk to you about your diaphragm. Instead, and here's why. I really don't know how to guarantee that you are actually tapping into your diaphragm. Like to me, that's like saying, all right, I want you to focus on your liver. Hey Kyle, glad you made it. I want you to focus on your liver. I really cannot guarantee beyond a shadow of a doubt that you're focused on your liver and I'm not sure you can either. So instead, I'm going to give you a phrase that's going to tell you where to put the air, how much air to fill up, how to know when you need more, and how to fill it up, okay? All right, so what we're gonna do is, oh, actually, I'm sorry, the, so the phrase, <laughs> yes, that's right. That's, that's because I am your coach, Lori. Okay, so we're going to talk about our air tank. This is the phrase that we're going to use. And your air tank is from your hips to your shoulders, okay? 
It is not some obscure body part. It's so much more than that. It's from your hips to your shoulders. Why do I include your shoulders? Your shoulders don't breathe. No, but if your shoulders don't move when you are breathing, then you are breathing for survival. And that's a good thing, but it's not breathing for singing. You have got to breathe for singing, okay? Which means you have got to engage your shoulders, all right? So I'm gonna fill my air tank and I wanna maintain between 80 to 100% full at all times. I know I'm repeating myself a lot, but I'm very distracted by all of the comments that are going by. I have never done this before. Uh, usually when I go live, it's all just videos of my dog Zeke running through the woods. Uh, I've never had to actually explain myself as I'm live. So I hope that you're able to track with me. Okay. So we are going to take two types of breath that are going to fill our air tank, all right? So the first one is called a starter breath. Why is it called a starter breath? Because it's at the beginning. Now, it's not defined simply take a breath and then sing. That's not enough because what happens when we do that is we might take a really good breath, but then we kind of we hold our breath for a split second while we decide whether or not it's gonna be any good because we tend to self-evaluate. And when we self-evaluate, which way do we tend to lean? toward the negative, right? Typically we don't go, this is about to sound amazing. We should, because that would actually help it to sound amazing, but typically we don't, okay? We get into our own head and we talk ourselves out of how good it's gonna be and then we lose the full potential of that breath. If you hold your breath at all, you lose the full potential of that breath, okay? All right, so here's what I mean by a starter breath. Okay, so hopefully, as I said, you've got that phone in front of you instead of looking down, you've got a little bit of space, all right? Now, we're going to shift from breathing through our nose to breathing through our mouth. I want you to breathe in air and I want you to exhale voice, okay? So we're gonna go, so we're gonna take that breath in. Ha! Hey, Diane, that's awesome. Great, I hope that you are gonna go ahead and participate with me and sing along, okay? So I want you to just repeat what you hear, everyone, okay? All right. Oh, I'm breathing in air and I'm just exhaling voice. I'm not even singing yet, I'm just, creating sound, okay? Uh, and if you're not on the same note as me, don't worry about it. This is not an exercise in your ear training, okay? This is an exercise in breathing. So I breathe in through my mouth. Uh, uh, great, okay, now, for those of you who can tell that you're tight, you can tell that you're not really getting all the air out. I'm gonna show you a trick, okay? So I want you to take your fingers and you're gonna go like this, all right? And you're gonna place your fingers on your jaw above, and right in between your upper and lower jaw, okay? Everybody see what I'm doing here? All right, now, when your dentist tells you to open your mouth, you go, eh, but when your voice coach tells you to open your mouth, it's more like, ah. Okay, so you gotta drop that lower jaw. Oh, okay, so we're gonna put all that together. We're gonna breathe in air, exhale voice with our jaw dropped. Oh, oh, oh. Now again, we are not singing yet. All we're doing is creating sound, okay? Again, we're not trying to train our ear. Don't worry about getting the exact same note as me. What we're more interested in is, can I lock my jaw in place and keep it open uh, while, uh, while releasing my voice, okay? That's the key. That's what we're working on right now. We wanna learn how to take in a full breath of air and then we want to exhale voice, okay? Uh, hey, Peggy. Thanks for joining me from Vegas. I hope you're gonna join me in this voice lesson. Okay, so what we're gonna do is work, uh, I lost my place, hold on, let's see. I'm looking behind me at my notes, okay. And then my screen went dark. Okay, so we were talking about our starter breath and our catch breath, the two types of breaths that we need whenever we are singing, okay? These are so important. Listen, I have so many wonderful clients who come to me and I'm telling you, they have figured out a lot of the really hard stuff all on their own without any help from anybody but they don't know how to breathe correctly, so they're not getting the full potential out of their skills, out of their voice, out of their ability, okay? So this breathing is crucial, all right? Now, I mentioned a starter breath, so here's the definition of a starter breath. A breath is the first word of every phrase. Now, a moment ago, we were going, 
Ah. Not singing, just creating sound. Ah. Try that. Ah. Hey, Billy. Thanks for dialing in. Okay. So a moment ago, we were talking about the starter breath and a catch breath. All right. Now, the starter breath again, in case you want to write it down, is a breath is the first word of every phrase. And again, it's more than just take a breath and then sing. Okay. You want that breath to be attached to the phrase. So we just said, ah, and ah is the second word of that phrase. The first word is the breath. Okay. I hope that you're able to understand that. John, Auntie Man, great to see you. Thanks for joining me. Okay. So that starter breath, you want to make sure that you start at 100%. So I mentioned a moment ago that our air tank is 80 to 100% full at all times. Okay. 80 to 100% full at all times. Our air tank is from our hips to our shoulders. It includes our shoulders because if your shoulders don't rise when you're getting ready to sing, then you are only breathing for survival. You're not breathing for singing. All right. Okay. Now, our second kind of breath is called our catch breath. I mean, do I really want you doing math while you're trying to sing, you're trying to maintain between 80 and 100%? Absolutely not, okay? But what I am suggesting is that you wanna maintain between 80 and 100% full at all times. You're gonna do that with two types of breaths, the starter breath and the catch breath. Okay, so a catch breath. Every pause is a breath. Every pause is a breath. And typically when I say that, hey Katie, Typically when I say that, people go, oh yeah, okay, oh yeah, okay, okay, okay. But you gotta really stop and think about what I'm saying. I'm not saying that at the end of every sentence, at the end of a verse or a chorus, I'm saying that every single time you pause, you take that breath, okay? I don't know if you realize, I've been trying to do that this entire time that I'm talking to you, okay? So I'm gonna demonstrate if I take a starter breath, no catch breath, and then a starter breath, and a catch breath, okay? So what if I'm singing, what if I'm only singing one word and then there's like this dramatic pause and then I carry on? Should I then take another breath? All right, so the answer is yes. Hey, the answer is yes, all right? Nice, very nice, okay. Um, the answer is yes, so let me demonstrate, all right? So if I'm singing and I, and I just sing, baby, you know I love you. Okay, there was a pause after baby. I didn't hit any wrong notes, everything was fine. And so I might think, oh, that was great, that was good, it's fine, I don't need to improve it. But look what happens when I take that catch breath, I'm able to do more with it, okay? So if I sing, baby, you know I love you. I have more time. See how I'm able to extend it, I can play with it. I'm not in a hurry because I gotta hurry up and get to the end in case I run out of air or because I my next phrase, I gotta make sure that I set up for my next phrase. If I am taking catch breaths, pausing, every single time I pause, I breathe, then it's gonna go a lot smoother. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys something. Hopefully this, I don't know, oh, I guess you can't. Can I do this? I have no idea. Let's try something, I'm experimenting. Yes, okay, everybody read that, what does that say? says there is no thinking in singing there's only hearing and feeling now i have to tell you my san diego bestie does not care for that phrase at all so because of her i have learned to explain it better so let me tell you what i'm not saying i am not saying when i say there is no thinking in singing there's only hearing and feeling i am not saying to you that when you get on stage hey you just just shut your brain down and just sing and don't, don't think about a thing. That is, that is not what I'm suggesting. That does happen sometimes. If you've done this particular routine or this song over and over again, yes, you can kind of get lost in the moment and in the music and all the wonderful things that are happening while you're on stage and if you're worshiping and you know that's a whole nother thing and yes, but that's not what I'm talking about. So here's what I am saying, okay? So there is no thinking and singing. There's only hearing and feeling. All right, what I am saying is once you get to even at sound check, once you're at sound check, that's it. There is no, that is no longer the time to be thinking about how to sing, okay? Because again, which way do we lean whenever we are, whenever we are kind of self-evaluating or we're deciding how good it's gonna sound? We typically lean toward the negative. Okay, and so you're going to self-defeat. You're going to get in the way of your success. So that's not the time for that. Okay, so 
Here's what I tell, I have so many clients who come to me and they say, I have a show in a month. Here's my whole set, help me put it together. So yes, I will definitely jump in there with you and we will work on it and I'm gonna pour into you through a fire hose the best I can, but then ultimately I'm gonna say, all right, now once you get to sound check, okay, and that performance especially, you just need to throw everything against the wall and whatever sticks, sticks. That's it, okay? No more thinking about it. Now, the phrase was, there's no thinking and singing, there's only hearing and feeling. Okay, let's jump all the way to the end and let's talk about that feeling piece because that's really all the audience cares about. The audience does not care what you think about how you sound because we can hear that. We can hear that as an audience. We can hear that insecurity coming through, okay? We much more want to hear, how do you feel about what you're singing? Is this a happy song? How do you want me to feel about what you're singing, okay? So just get up there and just feel it. Just feel it. All right, now let's talk about the hearing piece. Okay, because it says there is no thinking and singing, there's only hearing and feeling. So let's talk about that hearing piece, okay? All right, so your, the name of our instrument, okay, I have a, I have a guitar here, I have a, a keyboard over here. I really can't play either one, but they look really great in my studio. The keyboard comes in handy. Okay, so let's talk about hearing. The name of our instrument as a singer is called what? Anybody? Quick enough to type it in there, okay? Yes, it is called our larynx, exactly, okay? So we're talking about our larynx right now, all right? So your larynx is your voice box. That is the name of your instrument. Now I'm gonna give you two examples from your life to prove that your larynx learns how to function from hearing. Okay, your larynx learns from hearing. It does not learn from having someone explain to you how to use it, okay? Now, I'm not saying that there's not instruction. Obviously, there's instruction. But ultimately, it is going to learn from hearing, okay? All right, so I want you to roll the clock back, okay? Go back to when you were between one and three years old. Uh, for girls, it's probably closer to two. For boys, it's a little closer to three because boys typically start talking later than girls, generally speaking, okay? And I want you to go back to that time, and I wasn't there. I wasn't there, honestly, but I know that. But I'd be willing to bet you that no one ever sat you down and said, okay, it's time to explain to you how to speak, right? Okay, they simply were talking to you. They said, say mama, say da da, and eventually you started mama, da da, and bottle, and blankie, right? Okay. You heard it. Whatever accent they have, that is the accent that you probably picked up, okay? And whatever languages they speak, that's what you speak. And that may seem obvious, but let's, let's just let that resonate for a minute because that is how your larynx learns. All right, so that's example number one. I want you to roll the clock back, no, sorry, roll the clock ahead, okay, to modern day, right now. And I want you to think about the number of songs that you know, okay? Think about the number of songs that you know that uh, you've never said, I, I think I shall practice this song. I'm going to rehearse this song, right? You just know them. They come on and you're singing them. Uh, you don't even like them anymore and you're just singing along. And uh, they were probably not your primary activity, okay? So listening to those songs was secondary. They, you were playing music in the background and while you were working on something else and yet you learned all these songs. Why? Because the larynx learns from hearing. Okay, this is how the larynx learns. It does not learn by explaining, by listening to explanations, okay? So one of the best ways that you can take this training that I'm giving right now, and you can take it into your week, and you can take it into your month, okay, and into your future voice training, okay? You can keep coming back. I'm probably gonna keep doing this, hopefully, if it goes well. Hey, Jennifer, good to see you. Is go get some of your favorite singers recordings, if I'm in your favorite songs, get your AirPods out, okay, your earbuds out, and listen, but don't sing along. I know it's hard, it's terrible, we hate not singing along, but don't sing along. Just listen to how they're doing what they're doing, okay? So right now, in response to this video, your assignment is to go ahead and to listen to your favorite singers breathe. Just listen to them breathe. 
If you're just tuning in, why am I saying that? Because that's what this lesson is about. Today we're talking, the topic for today is breathing. We're talking about the difference between breathing for survival and breathing for singing. We're talking about filling our air tank, which goes from our hips to our shoulders, okay? Shoulders because you wanna take that really big breath. Ha! You wanna breathe in air and you wanna exhale voice. I think I just breathe through my nose, make sure you're breathing through your mouth for, for actual singing, okay? Wonderful. All right, so let's see, what else do we wanna cover? Does anybody have any questions about singing that I can answer for you? If not, I'm gonna go ahead and we're just gonna do some vocal exercises, okay? All right, now keeping in mind, also as I explained in the beginning, this is contemporary voice and performance coaching, okay? Our classical and our opera singers are over here off to the side, they're giving us the floor for all the rest of us who sing jazz, rap, rock, pop, contemporary Christian gospel, we're all out here on the floor right now, okay? So we use our speaking voice for singing, and I'm gonna definitely get further into that as we get further into these uh, live recordings, okay? All right, if there aren't any questions, I'm not even really sure how to check, I'm assuming that they would come up in that thread, uh, then I'm gonna go ahead and just repeat what you hear, okay? Make sure that you can see the phone straight ahead of you, uh, make sure you have room for your arms on the side, just so you're not feeling like you're bunched into a corner, okay? All right, so, uh, just repeat what you hear, okay? And remember, we're gonna we're gonna really try and keep that space between our upper and lower jaw. Ah, 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 ah. Now, the reason I explained to you about the larynx learning from hearing is because it's very important that you listen to the how. You listen to how I'm doing what I'm doing. Don't just try and hit the note, okay? It's not a homework assignment that you just wanna check the box. I want you to listen to how I'm doing it. I'm making sure that I'm filling up my air tank all the way to the top, okay? I'm keeping my jaw dropped, and then I'm releasing my voice. Oh, notice I'm not going, ah! I definitely will cover that in future lessons, okay? But right for now, just listen to how to do it correctly. Oh. Okay, now we're gonna get some movement, all right? So again, we're not singing yet, all right? I just want you to follow me. Oh. Oh. I'm using my speaking voice to glide through several different tones so that I can reach my full range of vocal motion, okay? So I'm starting at the bottom with my jaw dropped and I keep it dropped as I progress on up. Oh. circle again. Ah, ah, you go. Ah, ah, ah. Notice how I'm changing tone in order to continue to climb up the ladder. Oh.
You don't have to follow along with my hand. It just helps me to know how to give you enough time. Okay? All right. Uh, dropping that jaw. Uh, make sure it's not too. Uh, we never want to rely on air to hit a note. Uh, okay? Because your whole voice, your wonderful speaking voice, can still reach up there. Okay? I'll prove it to you. So repeat after me. Hey! And try and match my pitch. Hey! Notice how I'm making that scrunchy smile? Hey! All right, great. I hope you guys are doing that. How many of you are actually participating? Just give me a, a wave or something so that I know if you're actually doing it. Are you close enough to your phone that you can do that? Okay, I'm not seeing anybody participating. All right, that's fine. I'll just keep on going. Okay, the next thing I want to do is we're going to come all the way up here, okay? And uh, we're going to impersonate an owl, all right? Oh, yay. Okay, good, Diane. Awesome. Thank you. Yay. Okay, good, Lori. All right, so here's what we're going to do. I guess it takes some minute for it to come in. Hey, Sarai. Awesome. Okay, so we're going to impersonate an owl. I will go first. I don't want you to give me a wolf. This is not hoo-hoo, okay? All right, I want you to go... Ooh, ooh. Awesome, Billy. I'm glad to see that. Okay, so listen. Ooh, ooh. Okay, this is going to work best. When you really get, this is why you've got to get that jaw dropped, top and bottom. Ooh. Okay, take a big breath and really use that core. Ooh, ooh. All right, good girl, Franquicia. All right. Okay, good. Why are we doing that? Because it's one of the ways, one of the ways that we can tap into head voice. If you're really not sure, I've had so many clients say, you know, I don't even know when I'm in head voice. Is, is head voice high? Yes and no. Okay, just because you're high, there are so, so many recordings that I could tell you uh, where the singer is super high and they are not in head voice. They are in a head voice blend, okay, but it's still a chest dominant blend where the chest is the thing that you hear more when i say chest i'm saying speaking voice conversation voice the chest is more of what you hear coming through okay uh we might say belting also okay is another term i say hollering in style hollering in style is a uh is a phrase that one of my clients coined i see frank is doing this at work hey good for you girl all right awesome okay so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna give our, our owl again, all right? I want you to really pay attention to where it resonates, not just up high, but where in your head that it resonates. Because in a future lesson, we will talk about how the sound is created, either in the front or the back, depending on the tone that you are uh, trying to achieve, okay? Ooh, ooh. Great, all right, awesome. Okay, now we're gonna build on that because we're always building, okay? So we're gonna go, Okay, so what do Marines say? The Marines say, hoo -wah, right? They give that emphasis on both of those syllables. hoo -wah. So that's what we're going to do. This owl is in the Marines, okay? So he's going to go, hoo -hoo -wah. Okay, now, the trick is make sure you don't go, hoo -hoo -wah. okay? No, we want to, the hoo, the owl is showing us the right shape for whatever vowel sound we're singing. Okay, so we're gonna do that again and listen. I'm gonna keep the same shape in the back. Ooh, ooh, wah. Okay, everybody do that? All right, I should not look dead on in the camera when I do that, okay? All right, ooh, ooh, wah. all right, okay. We're gonna build on that. Sorry, I think I spoke over some of you doing it, okay. We're gonna build on that, okay? So we got that. Now we're gonna let that owl just fall, okay? Ooh, ooh, wah. I'll do it again. Ooh, ooh, wah. Okay, one more time. Ooh, ooh, wah. But I want you to notice, okay? I want you to tell me if you're getting stuck. In other words, stuck would be, in a higher tone, ooh, ooh, ah. and some people, they get stuck, okay? But when you're speaking, you could easily go, 
What? No way. You've got to be kidding me. I can't believe it. And your voice is immediately going to jump to the middle of every one of those tones because your larynx knows how to do all that. Okay? Singing is not that complicated. All right? It's the same way. You got to take all these speaking skills and you got to pull them over here into your singing file and refile those because every skill that you use for speaking is a skill that you already have developed. You've been developing your whole life and you've been working on all day today. Okay? Talking to people, that is a singing skill. You just got to pull it over here and learn how to use it for your singing. All right? Okay, so one more time. Ooh, ooh, All right, now uh, we're going to land that plane. Okay, so it's going to be like this. So we're going to actually go. So I want everybody to go in your chest voice. Make sure you're just in your regular speaking voice. It should sound like your speaking voice. Okay, and you're just going to go, ah. Uh, Make sure you don't go ha, huh, no breath, okay? Close your throat, ah, uh, okay? All right, that's where you're gonna land. Whatever note you did, that's where you're gonna land. Ah, uh, okay? Ooh, ooh, uh, try it. All right, how'd you do? You gotta tell me how you're doing. All right, great. Let's see, it's about 1.40. Does anybody have any questions before I move on? All right, I'm gonna take some water. I really hope that you have water handy. Awesome, wonderful. Okay, oh, I did wanna share with you guys uh, a couple of things that I'm using during this time I always have available for my clients. Um, this is called Sambuca spray. It's really good for your for your throat and recovery when you have a sore throat and things like that. Um, this is a great one for building up your immunity. No, I don't get any kickbacks or whatever. I'm just sharing with you what I have in my studio all the time. Okay, <laughs> Lori, funny. Okay, um, I actually had a client uh, and she knows who she is. I'll just say Courtney, her name is Courtney. I'm not going to protect the innocent. I just won't say her last name. And when I did the owl the very first time when she was here, her eyes watered up immediately. And I said, what's wrong? And she said, I'm afraid of birds. <laughs> it was just the most precious thing. So Courtney and I don't do the owl whenever she makes it into lessons. Okay, the last one I want to show you. This is awesome. This stuff is amazing. I'm trying to get the glare off of it. Uh, it's called Singer's Spray. Have any of you ever tried this stuff? It is amazing. Like you can literally spray it in your throat and then go ahead and sing or speak or whatever. Um, and you will feel the results immediately. And it's all, this is all holistic. I'm not a medicine fan. I'm, I don't, I don't really have a medicine cabinet. Um, but I have those things. You can get that at like Whole Foods or Sprouts and I think Amazon and things like that. Um, anyway, so I swear by it. I love it. Hmm. What? <laughs> what? Oh, you're so sweet, Chrissy. I don't just have a song on the ready. Don't do that because you know that when people ask you to So Chrissy's asking for a song, but the, and the problem is that she knows that when people ask you to sing, you're supposed to sing because that's how I raised her. Um, but I don't really have a song. Hey, Crystal, I'm so glad you made it. I'm almost done, but um, I had thought about doing a song, but then I, I forgot to set something up. So next time, I promise. Um, okay, uh, what was the last thing? Okay, so let me just review, okay? So let's just review. So we, today's session is on breathing. So I really hope if you're joining late that you're going to go back and you're going to get to watch it, okay? We wanted to, so we talked about our air tank, right? Our air tank is from our hips to our shoulders, all right? We want to make sure that we are maintaining our air tank 80 to 100% full at all times. We do that with a starter breath, which is a breath is the first word of every phrase. So do this with me. Ah. Great. Okay. Do this with me, I'll go first. Ah, and now you do it with me. Ah, okay, great. So we wanna make sure that ah is, ah is the second word of that phrase and the first word was the breath, okay? That catch breath, that catch breath. Hey, Chrissy, by the way, I did sing a little line. Um, that catch breath is, uh, the catch breath is a pause is a breath. Every single time we pause, we breathe. Okay. All right. Actually, here, Chrissy's Chrissy gave me an idea. Something we can do. All right. Uh, if I can find it. Uh huh. All right. Let's see if I can do this. 
All right, so I'm gonna show you guys the words here, okay? It's just the one little chorus that we use sometimes to demonstrate some things. So this will be fun. I think this will be fun. We'll make this work, okay? Hold on. Awesome. Okay, here we go. All right, so can you guys all see that? Okay, so it says, let me blow it up a little bit. Good, okay. So the first, so I'm going to say it and then I'm going to sing it. So I'm gonna show you guys the proper enunciation for this so this little chorus that I wrote, okay? So, repeat after me. You're gonna say, I wanna sing like all my favorite singers. Try and match my pitch and my tone. I'll say it again. I wanna sing like all my favorite singers. Okay, next line, listen. I love to sing with all I've got. Let's do that together. I love to sing with all I've got. Okay, now the next line's kind of tricky. It goes like this. I want to sing. Okay, I'll do it again. I want to sing with all my heart and soul. Do that last part. With all my heart and soul. And the last line. I love to sing. Now we call that digging it out. Definitely got to dig it out. Okay, don't hit the floor. I love to sing and I'll never stop. Do that last part. And I'll never stop. Okay, I'm going to do it one more time from the top. I'll, I'm going to do it twice in a row. Okay, so I'm not going to ask you to join me. I'll just say it and I'll say it again. I want to sing like all my favorite singers. I want to sing like all my favorite singers. I hope that you are remembering that starter breath, okay? I love to sing with all I've got. I love to sing with all I've got. Okay, now here's the tricky one. I want to sing with all my heart and soul. Join me. I want to sing with all my heart and soul. And the last line, dig it out. I love to sing and I'll never stop. One more time. I love to sing and I'll never stop. Okay, that is the exact enunciation for this song, all right? So I'm gonna sing the first line and then I'll sing it twice, okay? I wanna sing like all my favorite singers. With me? I want to sing like all my favorite singers. One more time. I want to sing like all my favorite singers. Okay, last second line. I love to sing with all I've got. Make sure you give it that snap. I love to sing with all I've got. Big breath. I love to sing with all I've got. Great. Okay, next line. This is a tricky one. Listen. I want to sing with all my heart and soul. Listen, do your best to dig it out. We'll get into that in future lessons. I want to sing with all my heart and soul. One more time. I want to sing with all my heart and soul. Okay, last line, dig it out. I love to sing and I'll never stop. One more time. I love to sing and I'll never stop. Last time. I love to sing and I'll never stop. Okay, awesome. I hope you sang that with me. I hope you enjoyed that. And I have one more thing I want to cover with you. If you're still hanging with me, that's cool. How many of you would like to, I have so many clients come and say, I just wanna know how to find my true voice. I wanna find my singing voice. Is that any of you? Any of you ever felt that way? I hope you're drinking lots of water. I know that I am. Especially for contemporary singing, I'm gonna show you how to find your true voice, okay? All right, it's very simple. Okay. Oh, good. I'm glad that you thought that was fun. Okay. Awesome. It's very simple. Here's how you find your true singing voice. Okay. All right. 
So you're going to take a nice big breath and you're just going to say your name first, okay? All right, so I'll go first. Lisa Marie Bayungan. All right, so go ahead and say that. Your name. All right, now, awesome. Okay, next, I uh, just want you to keep repeating what you hear me say, but replace my name with your name, obviously. Okay, all right, so I'm gonna take, remember to take that starter breath, it's so important that we take that starter breath, okay? My name is Lisa Marie Bayungan. Now notice, I am not pushing my voice out, okay? I'm simply, because I've taken such a nice starter breath, I just open my mouth and my voice is going to release. I breathe in air, I release my voice, okay? My name is Lisa Marie Bayangan. Go ahead. All right, now I'm gonna take a starter breath. I'm gonna say the same phrase and then I'm going to add uh, a second part to the phrase, okay? And notice I'm gonna take a catch breath because I am pausing after my name, all right? My name is Lisa Marie Bayangan. And this is my singing voice. Go ahead and try that. Okay, now did you get that catch breath in there? It's kind of quick and that's the thing about catch breath. Catch breaths are very quick. They happen very quick in between our phrases, okay? And if you are doing it correctly and you're starting at 100%, like we said, because we wanna maintain our air tank between 80 and 100% full at all times, if you're doing it correctly, then you won't need a whole lot of air uh, for your catch breath, okay? Hey, Amy. All right, so one more time, all right? So I'm gonna say, my name is Lisa Marie Bayungan, and this is my singing voice. Okay, go ahead and try that. So if you just did that with me, then that is your primary singing voice, okay? Not if you're over here, these classical opera singers, okay? They've, they've stepped aside. Remember, we're, we're on the stage right now, all of us contemporary singers who sing uh, gospel, rap, rock, country, pop, uh, contemporary Christian gospel, okay? So for those of us in, that, in this huge bucket that I mentioned, we all sing with our speaking voice. Okay? We use our speaking voice in order to sing. All right. So the way that you just heard your voice, notice when you projected, when you said, my name is Lisa Marie Bayungan and you filled in your name, you did not strain, right? You didn't strain. You didn't have to push your voice out. It just came out. All right. Hey, awesome. Yes, Amy. I'm almost done, but I would love for you to go back and rewatch it. Uh, and I think I am going to come back on tomorrow. I'll come on with lesson two. Uh, no, not tomorrow. Monday, I will come on with lesson two, and that will be the alphabet session. Okay. And um, let's see. What do we got? Okay. 148. All right. So uh, that's almost an hour. I thank you so much for those of you who tuned in the whole time. Um, I know we had some people in uh, San Diego, Las Vegas, and then, of course, my daughter Chrissy in Italy, and then some uh, local friends in Memphis, and Amy, I cannot remember where you are, um, but I know that you are not here in Memphis. Wish you were. Miss you. Um, so uh, thank you so much to everyone. I am Voice Coach Lisa Marie with CVP Coaching. Uh, you can check out my page, my website. You can come and see me at my studio. I'd love to have you here if you're in town. Yeah. Oh, yes, Hawaii. Hello. Aloha. Yes, of course. I'll be in Hawaii in August. I don't know if you'll still be there. Okay, and uh, thank you again so much for tuning in, and that's it.